Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. That's right, if you read the title, I bought a brand new motorcycle. Now before I reveal it, um, and then uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, a few years back, I had gotten my first ever motorcycle. It was a Suzuki Van Van 200 2017. Um, it was a really good first bike. Uh, I'll do like more of a, like a review here in a bit. Um, and then before I reveal the new motorcycle, if you can't tell from the gauge cluster already, if you can, you know, hats off to you. But before I do a review, I'm just gonna go grab some quarters uh, for to uh, clean the bike because I haven't done that. And it rained recently, and it rained when I didn't think it was supposed to. So she got a little wet and she's kind of like dusty and stuff. So we're gonna go wash her off. And uh, then that's what I'll show show off the new bike. The whole point of this video basically is comparing the two bikes, um, the old one and the new one. So the Suzuki Van Van and the new one that I just uh, that I'm riding right now. So after we wash her down, get her looking nice and clean, I'll uh, reveal it to you guys and then kind of go through the pros and cons of each bike what I like most about both bikes and then what I like least about both bikes so I will uh, cut to after she's washed all right and for the big reveal I got me a Honda Rebel 500 traded in the Suzuki Van Van 200 the 2017 Suzuki Van Van 200 in for this butte uh, I named her Brigitte because I'm a huge nerd and I like overwatch now let's I guess we can go over some uh, pros and cons while uh, while we got her looking nice and pretty so we'll start with the Honda Rebel and then I will backtrack to the Suzuki while I'm riding because I am supposed to be somewhere I forgot to put my watch on uh, pretty soon I'm gonna play some Dungeons and Dragons with my friends but let's start out with I'm gonna do like basically like three main things that I love about the bike and three things that I don't love about the bike. Now for the things that I love about the bike, I mean I, the list can go on. This is my dream bike for anybody who doesn't know, which is most people. Uh, I've always wanted a Honda Rebel 500. It's it's beautiful. I It's aesthetically one of my favorite bikes ever. Uh, I, there's not really much I would change about it. Um, but I guess let's just do the first the three things I love about it. One one of the smoothest rides ever um the clutch in this thing is probably like the main thing i love about it the clutch is so smooth it has a what is called a slipper clutch from what i have been told to where the clutch engagement is so buttery smooth and it takes like little to no pressure beautiful i love the engagement of the gears um something that i will talk about is that a dead mayfly get off of there god Something I'll talk about with the Van Van um, was that the clutch engagement in first gear was uh, abysmal. Uh, I like sometimes it wouldn't even go into first gear, and, and yeah, you know, we'll go into that later. But this thing, I could I could be on neutral and I could roll back and forth, and then I kick it back into first gear. And it hits it every time. It's it's perfect. It's beautiful. Hey, and I love it. Second thing, the main thing that I love about it is I mean mine in particular. I love my color scheme. Uh, I didn't know that the 2023, I didn't know what came in with the brass wheels and like, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it catches on video or not, but it's basically almost like a matte black with like a uh, silver metallic flake in it. Beautiful. Love it. Um, but I love the coloration of this thing. Uh, I, I didn't know what came in this brass wheel with the, with the, it's just beautiful. I love it. And the third main thing that I love about it is the stock lights, actually. Now, if you can tell, I forget what year it was. Um, I think it was like 2020, 2021 is when they started switching over to these uh, blinkers and the LED headlights. Uh, I know like when they first came in the 2017s, they had like, I think it's comparable to, I don't know, I think it's like a CB500 blinkers where they're like the more of the triangle and they're orange and they're just they're ugly i hated them i wanted nothing to do with them but they they switched over to these round kind of like retro bobber looking blinkers love them they're so sick and then like the tail light 
cluster is significantly better than what it used to be. Same thing, it had like those ugly ones, and then I'm pretty sure this was also fairly different. But that's basically, like, this is the three things that I mainly love about this thing. I mean, it's my dream bike, so I could go on and on about, like, just the aesthetics and uh, the feeling. I like how low it is. I'm not, I'm not short, but, you know, for a lot of bigger bikes, uh, I would be tippy towing, but with this thing, I can flat foot and it's just comfortable. I love it. And I guess that brings us back to uh, the three things that I dislike. This is kind of hard to find. Uh, there isn't really much. I say the number one thing that I dislike the most. I'll just, I'll just go out and say it. This engine, I don't know if you can see, the side of the engine case sticks out so far on the right hand side compared to the left. I was watching a lot of review stuff, like the left there's a lot of room and my leg doesn't touch at all when I'm on this side, but when I'm on the right side, it sticks out so much. And I was watching a bunch of review channels, Life of Birch, uh, check them out on YouTube. Uh, he's great, he has a bunch of Honda Rebels and he does a lot of Honda stuff. And he was saying that the one thing that bugged him about the 500 was that this sticks out so much. And I'm very happy that they put this uh, heat shield on it because my leg is constantly resting on that. Now, is it like a like a deal breaker to me? No, no I mean, it's my dream bike, I don't care. But, you know, it was it's a little irritating sometimes, but I can adjust. I could probably get longer pegs to kind of like push my foot out a little bit more. But, you know, that's that's my biggest gripe on that. The second thing, I wouldn't say I hate, but it seems that the rear suspension for me, because I'm, I'm pretty light, I'm like 155, and this is a pretty... This is a bigger bike for me. The rear suspension seems really stiff. I find myself bouncing off the seat quite a bit when I hit even some of like the smallest bumps. Compared to the Suzuki, I was not bouncing quite as much. And it's definitely like the front suspension is beautiful. Like every time I like I could feel it absorb through the front, but then the back kind of just like bounces. And I don't know, the suspension is not really super great. Uh, in the back and I, I know that you can adjust these rear shocks they do have some preload settings but um, when I take it in for its first kind of like inspection and stuff to the dealership I'm just gonna ask them if they can make it softer for me because I am a little bit lighter I'll just let them do it I don't want to touch this bike like when I when I got the van van I was not afraid of like modding the hell out of the thing let's just splice some wires you know let's let's just do this and that but with this thing I'm I'm just gonna not really going to do much. I'll talk about, you know, maybe in the next video, uh, the things that I'm going to do about the, with this bike. It's not going to be much. It's a lot of bolt-on stuff. It's not a lot of, there's not really any modifications that I want to do to it, honestly. Um, but yeah, the suspension is kind of, I don't know. It, it's really, it's really stiff in the back, but I think that could be fixed and adjusted. So not that big of a complaint. And then the last is, I just, why do they did, <laughs> what is this thing, man? They, they did so well with the blinkers. They they changed the blinkers to make them look so aesthetically pleasing. But when they came... The license plate light is so ugly. It, it Why does it stick out so far? Why couldn't they just put like a little dome light that sticks down? I know that's such a stupid little thing to be like annoyed about. But that, that annoys me. And I'll combine these two because since they're so little and easily... like it, You could just ignore it. This and the seat. The seat's a little bit uncomfortable after a bit. The It's kind of, I don't know. I've never had a seat like this. Like the, I think just coming from the van van, I was spoiled. Because the van van basically had a couch for a seat. So, But those are the three main things that I like and dislike about this bike. Overall, the three things that I dislike, they don't change my mind whatsoever. This is still a 10 out of 10 bike for me. I think it's a good beginner bike um, because... I, I've been riding for five years now, I believe. Even switching from the Van Van 200 with the thumper motor, you know, super high torque, very low top speed to this thing, which has pretty good torque and pretty good top speed. It is just such an easy bike. I hopped right on it. I had no issues figuring it out. The power band to it is really easy to figure out. Um, it's not too loud, uh, but it's, you know... It's loud enough to be able to, you know, hear the gears to where <laughs> the fan van was pretty quiet. And it was sometimes hard to find out when I was supposed to shift or not. So, all in all, 10 out of 10. Love this bike. I love her. Uh, Brigitte is staying. I'm never probably, I'm never going to trade this thing in. I love it to death. And uh, I got to jump on the road and get some gas and head to where I'm going. Also, the humidity is ridiculous today and I am sweating. So... I'm going to uh, jump to after I get gas and um, 
we'll talk about the Suzuki Van Van and the things that I like and dislike about it. So here's the jump. Gas is got. It is busy today. Next uh, on the agenda is to talk about the 2017 Suzuki Van Van 200. I'll try to insert a picture on screen right now if I am able to do so while editing. Uh, but basically, I had the uh, blue Suzuki Van Van 200 uh, as my first ever bike. And so I guess I'll talk about the things that I loved about the bike first. The top three things that I loved about the Suzuki Van Van. Probably the first main thing that I loved about it is just how hooligan-y it, it, basically the weight like the weight and the size of it was perfect for having a first bike and initially for what I wanted to do with the bike I wanted something that I wasn't necessarily looking for like highway uh, travel or anything so I wasn't looking for anything huge um, and I really liked the Honda Grom but that was a, just a bit too small for me because I'm a Honda fanboy and I, I wanted a Grom the size of the Suzuki Van Van was perfect. It was lightweight, but it was still kind of the size of a full motorcycle. Uh, it was super unique, which I, I will talk about in a bit. Um, but I just loved how lightweight and nimble it was. Uh, you know, it it was uh, a pretty good first bike to learn on. You know, being that like it was a small engine, it was very forgiving, uh, which is which is really nice. Um, you know, I. I learned how to work a clutch for the first time Ugh, there's that suspension jesus um, i learned how to work a clutch for the first time on that bike and it was super forgiving it was super nice um even though i was you know, i'll talk about it here in a bit but even though i complained a little bit while i was reviewing the rebel about how the clutch engagement was um given that i didn't have any other experience on a bike it was pretty simplistic to figure out you know a lateral clutch and uh yeah, it was, it was a nice forgiving bike and it was lightweight and I loved how lightweight and nimble and how it was almost the best of both worlds. I had a decent street bike. It was a little bit more visible than a Grom uh, on the street, so I felt a little bit more safe. It was orange, I promise. It was small enough that I can like, you know, dumb, do dumb stuff, like go off road if I wanted to, because it was basically the van van is kind of a dual sporty type of motorcycle. Um, but yeah, so that's the first thing uh, I loved about it. The second thing I loved about it was the aesthetics. Now, I, I know <laughs> I changed a lot on the bike. Uh, you know, I did blinkers, tail light, fender eliminator. Uh, I removed the front fender. I did uh, all new handlebars. You know, there was a lot that I did aesthetically to the to the bike to make it, you know, the way I really wanted it. But the with what I could afford at the time, because I'm a broke boy, and with my extreme weird taste it fit it fit the bill i loved how stupid the big the back tire was how big it was it just looked so silly and i loved it i love weird things but i like how it kind of looks like a dirt bike but also like a cafe kind of uh kind of it, it just it had such a cool unique look to it and i loved that i guess the third thing you know that i loved about it was just how simple it was you know you can't really do anything wrong to it it was fuel injected which uh, makes you know life so much easier because I don't know anything about carburetors and I don't want to mess with them uh, so it made it super easy to work on you know do an oil change and everything I didn't have to worry about much there it had just a basic analog gauge so I didn't have to worry about you know electronics to that thing and uh, it had like a trip meter um, that I use for a gas gauge. That was kind of annoying, but you know, I'll, I'll get to that. A lot of people said that drum brakes kind of sucked, which I, yeah, drum brakes probably, I, I mean, the one that I had, yeah, it kind of sucked, but uh, a nice thing about it was that the bike was so lightweight and I'm so lightweight that it worked pretty well for me. Um, I could see, you know, putting a little bit more weight on the bike, you know, if you're not as tiny as me, seeing how the drum brake would be an issue. But all in all, like, it was such a simplistic thing to work on. Like, I've never done wiring in my life. I did all blinkers and uh, tail light, and it was so easy to figure it out because the wiring harness wasn't going to multiple different directions. I didn't have to splice into it or anything. It was just so simplistic. It was mostly plug and play. It was 
you know, the bike was just so simplistic and I loved that. And now the three things that I hate most about the bike. Given that I really didn't have much of a reference compared to any other bike, I really didn't have a lot of complaints about the bike until I rode this thing and I bought this thing. Uh, and then I really started to like, it really opened my eyes. So it was like, wow, you know, the Van Van did have its issues. <laughs> Uh, the one main issue is, it, you'll see, it, it kind of ties in with the things that I love most about the bike. Uh, the main one, the, the main issue that I had about the bike was just how unsafe I felt on it. It really kind of ruined how I approached motorcycles for years until I rode this thing. Because it gave me no confidence riding it. Uh, it cause of mostly because of its weight. I guess that's the mo that's the, the big thing how how small and how the, the wheelbase it, it just it felt unsafe. Given that it was made to do dual sport stuff, um, what I've come to find out really not from personal experience but from you know some research and stuff that like if you buy a dual sport, you're basically buying something for on road or for off road because it's going to be geared more towards having you know more torque than speed uh it's going to be pretty high off the ground so you're going to be a little bit unbalanced and it's going to be somewhat lighter weight compared to most road motorcycles and so you know it had so much torque but it just didn't have any top speed and it was so lightweight that like when i was on the road and any car that would pass me i'd feel like i was getting blown over even if there was like a small gust of wind you know i felt like i was gonna get blown over and uh it, it was it just felt so unsafe and i didn't know that like not all motorcycles felt that way because that was my only frame of reference and the only other motorcycle that i rode at the time was my uh buddy's fz07 which you know was way too much for me you know it scared me and I, it so that wasn't a good frame of reference and then the other thing was a z125 i think it's what it's called it's basically a grom and so another small mini moto so it, you know had better gearing uh but still felt unsafe i felt it felt small and you know i didn't really have any good frame of reference to what a safe bike felt like the the second thing that i uh disliked about the bike was uh, again it goes with my likes is just how simplistic it was you know um i would constantly find myself lost in the gears because it's hard to hear the engine um, and it didn't have a gear indicator. All it had was a speedometer and a and, and like a analog trip kind of thing. It didn't even have a fuel gauge. So like I'd find myself, you know, low on fuel if I forgot to set the trip meter. Uh, had to keep track of like how many miles I'd gone to get the fuel. Um, being simplistic with the drum brake. The drum brake didn't really give me any confidence in the stopping power of the thing. The clutch was very simplistic. That was a bad shift. Um, I felt unsafe with the clutch. The clutch would constantly, like, I would feel, I would get stuck in neutral a lot, which was weird. And I did not like that. Uh, it would not want to go back into second gear. And I, I looked on a bunch of forums about it. A lot of people said that that's just a Van Van thing because I was on a, multiple Van Van pages on Instagram and Facebook. And a lot of them said that, like, the clutch in that thing, and it's, it's just so clunky and very, like, if you, if you see a gear and you imagine a gear engaging to itself, that's how it is. And if you are in between teeth, it will not want to engage. And so like, for example, if I was in neutral and I wanted to go back down into first, don't you dare, I would have to stomp on it to see if it would get engaged. And if it wasn't engaging, then I have to roll back and forth to see if I can get the engagement that I wanted. And it, it was just so obnoxious to deal with. And it was so annoying. and. It definitely didn't give me confidence being at like stops because like what if i'm stopped trying to get into first and then a car behind me is flying and they don't see me and they hit me you know so again it just led to like you know this confidence thing that i'm like i just don't feel confident taking this thing on busy roads either like forget the highways just like slightly busy roads feel unsafe now so there's that and then the third thing that i really didn't like about it the overall build quality of it um the you know the, the engine probably would never die i could probably throw that thing underwater it would start up right away 
but everything else about it man it was like the i had this issue with the chain and with the uh, adjusters the rear axle adjusters to tighten and loosen the chain for the life of me i could not keep the chain taut and i know that like the, there was breaking miles the chain's gonna stretch and stuff you know i understand that and um i, I put 3,000 miles on that thing and it was well past the breaking period and before i had gone to the 3,000 miles i had changed the chain because i contacted multiple dealerships about the issues i was having they all were saying the same thing they're like that's weird the stock chain shouldn't stretch that much but then i would go on the forums and a lot of people on the forums are like oh yeah the stock chain is trash you know it just continuously stretches until eventually it'll fail after a while it's rare to fail but it has happened on a couple of people's bikes and i was like that's not cool i ended up changing the chain uh, a lot of people recommended it so i did it and uh after i changed the chain spent a pretty good money a pretty good amount of money on it because it was the one that was suggested to me to someone on a uh, page on a forum and they said i haven't had any issues uh and i was like okay so i did it and the issue just kept proceeding and i was noticing that the rear adjuster on the axle just it was not holding up and i don't know why i don't know what the issue was there i don't know how i could have fixed it or how i could have resolved that issue but it just you know it was not happy and it would never keep taut and it would continuously get loose there was one time when i was pulling into my dad's house uh to try to store the motorcycle and it just popped off and that was the stock one so that was but it just it just popped off from how loose it was and i just adjusted it like a week ago and i i had a torque wrench and everything i i torqued it i don't know what the problem was so overall build quality of the van van was just it was pretty tough uh, and again, I didn't have any frame of reference, so I'm like, oh, this is just normal motorcycle stuff. I don't want to ride it anymore. But <laughs> I was like, if this is what people do in motorcycles constantly, then I, I want nothing to do with it. After riding this thing, and I, I feel so safe on this thing. Like right now, this is technically not a highway. It's a busier road. It, it's an Anthony Wayne trail. And I feel safe. I, I, it's the thing, it just doesn't budge. It is still, but it's still nimble. You know, just the quality of this and how safe I feel and the extra weight and the extra CCs. I just feel so safe on this thing. It has changed my perspective of riding completely. I, I have ridden it every day except for a couple days when it's rained. Uh, since I bought it, uh, I, I love this thing. This is the coolest thing that I've ever bought and it's a dream come true and I'm so happy to have it. And uh, But yeah, um... I think that's it for my pros and cons list for both bikes. If you guys like this video, uh, please leave a like, comment down below, uh, tell me tell me what your guys' dream bikes are, I guess. Uh, comment down below, uh, subscribe if you want to continue seeing content on the Rebel 500. Um, the plan is for the next video, uh, I'm going to be adding some new parts to it, so stay tuned, uh, and hopefully you guys like the video, thanks for watching. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone.